Hey everyone, welcome back to the workshop and today we wanna to work on something a little bit different. A lot of people are getting diode lasers and finding out they want a larger work area. Well, many of the manufacturers offer rail extension kits for their lasers and that's what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna to be taking this A30 Pro, we're gonna be putting the extended rails on there, setting it up in Lightburn, so I thought I'd take you along with how it works in case you're working on a similar project or wanna know how it's done. So let's jump right into it. So the items come shipped in this kind of square tube box, and so we want to take it out. And you'll want to notice on one end here, there is a limit switch. So just make sure you don't miss that. Um, you may already have one, but it's good to not throw that out. So we're just going to get everything unboxed and take a quick look at it. So what comes in there is you've got the two Y extension rails. One of them has the markings in uh, metric, 0 to 850. They've got a basic one sheet that kind of talks about the software setup and the wiring diagram, but uh, not necessarily steps of assembling it. You are provided with extra belt hardware and your limit switch mounting screws. This is an adapter for certain laser modules. There again is that limit switch that comes in the end cap. Then you have your wiring harness and the replacement belts. So we're going to go ahead and just start disassembling the laser. we got to get it pretty much torn apart all the way. we got to take all the feet off take our belts out, um, remove that limit switch off the bottom, and then go ahead and uh, disconnect your rails. So I'm going to go ahead and just get the base frame set up here. I'm just starting the screws on each side first until I get them all uh, together, and then I lock them down. Then we want to take uh, cable ties off, so get a side cutters, take away all those zip ties, just free up your cable extension from the old one, and then we will start digging into the module. So you will have to take the module apart. There are four screws on the back. I believe that's a two millimeter uh, Allen head. So just take those four screws out and then just be careful removing the back panel as there is the wire for the uh, uh, the antenna on there. So you just kind of want to get that set to the side nice and gently. And then uh, we're going to need to kind of untwist some of the wires. They're uh, a little bit braided together. So just kind of easily pull those connectors out and then start fishing them back out the side hole. Just take your time not to damage anything in here and uh, take note of everything that kind of where it was at so you know how to put it back together. Uh, they do provide wiring diagrams, so we're going to get that set out and we're going to be pushing the cables back in. The, the slot on the side is, is big enough to get them through, but you do kind of want to take your time uh, just getting them in one by one so that they all fit through and then you can feed that uh, snake skin sleeve up there. And then we want to just take a look and follow your wiring diagram. They're color coded and they're also labeled by the white labels. So just take your time, push each one back in, make sure that they're seated properly. And then we'll kind of make sure that the wires are all out of the way, routed okay. And then we can be putting the back cover back on, uh, just get that lined up and put your four screws back in. Now with the module back together, we can start attaching it back to the frame. You're going to be needing to reuse the hardware you pulled off from the old one. So I like to start with one end, get the foot and the module on. Then we've got to slide our gantry on, make sure the laser module uh, part is going to go forward. And then you can put your back feet on as well. Now we want to go ahead and make sure we put our limit switch back onto the Y rails. And so make sure you've got those two longer screws with the spacers and uh, get that fed down in there. Then we can flip it back over. I like to make sure that we do a check on the eccentric nuts, so just make sure it's running smoothly. And then we're going to run our uh, belts back in here. I'm just using a tool to kind of lift it up and over that uh, sprocket and then into the other side. And then we'll run it back down the full length of the rail. Now we want to use our, you can either use the new ones or reuse your old ones. These uh, clamps will hold the belts in. I'm just locking them in at the front first, just up to the edges, and then putting our end caps back on. With that in place, we can then pull it to the back end. You want to tension your belts uh, properly and then tighten those down. And then we're going to clip, put our, put our end caps back on, and then we'll clip these short. I leave them just a little bit long so that we have a bit of a gap. We're going to put the laser module back on. We can start reattaching all of our wires into the appropriate plugs. And then with that all done, we can come back and do some cable management. They do provide a few zip ties, but you might want to have some smaller ones on hand as well for some of the smaller holes. Uh, just making sure we've got strain relief on everything, and I'm attaching the air hose as well to the side 
and then I will just kind of temporarily add some zip ties to hold these together until we really figure out the best cable management for this in the new enclosure. All right, now that we have the hardware all set up and configured, well, you need to come into either Lightburn or Laser GRBL and make some changes. So I'm gonna do this from within Lightburn. What we need to do is we're gonna to have to edit the machine settings on the board as well as the device settings within the software. So I'm gonna go with the board first. So we're gonna come down here to edit and machine settings. We are going to wanna to turn on our machine at this point. And then it should be able to read from the controller. There we go. So now you're going to need to come down into output setup. And what we're looking for is our <clears throat> 131, our Y max travel. And this is by default set to 400. And we want to update this to 850. And we want to go ahead and write that and hit OK. Now that's going to tell the board that it's larger. But we also need to tell Lightburn that it is larger. So we're going to come into devices. We're going to find our laser, the Atomstack 830. And we're just going to go ahead and edit it. So we want it to be GRBL, serial. And in here, we want to adjust the y-axis length. So we need to change this to 850. Hit next. I always turn auto home off just so it doesn't um, fire up when I open up Lightburn and such in case I happen to have something on the board or the head's too low. Um, we can always manually home. Go ahead and hit next and finish, and that should go ahead and change our devices. Now mine's defaulted back to a stock laser, so we're gonna jump back into our Adam Stack A30. You just gotta find it from the list here. There we go. It's gonna reconnect, and now you notice that in here, our working area has changed, and it's in this very long format. And uh, so that's um, going to be one thing you need to work with, depending on the orientation of your machine, how you put your material, and you're gonna have to remember that the lower left down here is still your home and your origin and that it will uh, key off there. So if you have it rotated and you're approaching it from the side, you need to adjust accordingly. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and set up a quick test file and uh, we will show that in action. So I have a 30 inch wide by about five inch board. So I'm gonna just quickly draw that in here. So we're gonna draw a rectangle and I'm actually going to switch this over to inches then we will select this and adjust to unlock the origin so width is going to be 5 height is going to be 30 there we go so that's going to give us a visualization of our board so let's go ahead and add the text this is a wide board and now I'm going to make a couple changes I'm just going to put the box on a tool layer so it kind of gets ignored I'm going to adjust this here, I'm now going to need to rotate this so you can spin it grabbing the corner and if you want it to lock into an orientation if you hold shift it's going to kind of just go in uh, snap to certain angles so here we're going to snap it to the vertical and then I can just bring this over approximately in here now we'll just set up our speeds and uh, feed rates because we're just going to draw this on an outline we'll run it through the laser and make sure everything works so we're going to start with a quick homing test and that should touch off the lower corner there and then we'll do a quick frame test on the board before starting the job. Everything looks good so we're going to go ahead and send it. I've got this sped up a bit just so uh, we're not sitting here watching all day but as you can see it's working through the entire length. And there you have it, we engraved, this is a wide board. And that's just under 30 inches. Um, the overall width of this is 850 millimeters now. And so that's gonna be about 31 and a half inches of travel in that direction. So um, definitely increasing the size of the laser and really not too difficult of an upgrade to do. So I would encourage you that if you've been thinking about getting, uh, extending your laser, uh, not to worry about the upgrade. It's not too difficult. Hopefully this walked you right through it and uh, can get you working with a larger laser. Now, of course, this is gonna need a bigger enclosure now and or some sort of downdraft table. Um, I'm actually setting this up for my friend Mike and so he's gonna be working on that and we'll see how that goes maybe in a later video. But uh, for now, I wanna make sure that uh, 
I just shared the process with people in case they were kind of stumped or curious about it, uh, worried about it. Hopefully this uh, gives you some points and tips on how to do that for yourself. Anyway, thanks again for stopping by. I hope this was informative for you. And uh, if you are looking at doing this upgrade on your Atom Stack laser, I will have links down below to where you can purchase it. Those are affiliate links and they do go help this channel with a little bit of a kickback from those purchases at no extra cost to you. So if you use them, appreciate it. But as always, no pressure. Once again, thanks for watching. And uh, if you liked this or have any questions, you know, hit those buttons down below. Uh, I'll ho hopefully uh, be able to answer any questions for you on that. And uh, otherwise, uh, we'll catch you on next time. But I hope you can get out to your workshop and make something too. We'll see you soon.